Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing very, very well. Um, did anybody see uh, yesterday how the United Nations is sort of trying to sort of edge in now? S somebody quite well known has said, oh, look at this. United Nations is suddenly trying to play more of an active role. What he's more or less saying is, where were they previously? Why have they not been concerned with um, trying to stop wars in the world? But they want to come in on this um, Ukraine drain issue, don't they? With the help of Turkey. They want to be seen to be doing what they're supposed to stand for. An organisation that's capable of uh, bringing peace and security to the world. Which we know they won't do. We know that <laughs> that is just a shop front face. That's not who they really are. But there they are. So I am now beginning to think that if God is going to use them later on for removing all religion, why is he not using them right now? It would be one way, wouldn't it? One way of showing the world that the United Nations is... Uh, never been capable of bringing true peace and security to the world at any stage. They've had the opportunity, but it's almost like they are protecting the global powers that they on the earth. And if there's money to be made from wars, the United Nations isn't going to stand in the way of that. Not if they're getting a backhander anyway. So could God be using them at this time? Well, earlier on, I did a bit of uh, looking into Daniel. I think I read the whole chapter earlier on. I just decided to get the background on it. It's quite good when you read the whole chapter from start to finish and you suddenly realise what are the, the characters that come into play. You know, you, you have Daniel and you have Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and what they stand for and you see that how honourable these people were that they wanted to uphold uh, their own Christian beliefs. Uh, they wouldn't be persuaded by worshipping anything other than the God that they would give their life to, and that was the Most High. But it's just great the way um, you get King that's getting down on his knees one minute, in recognition of the fact that he's just a mortal king and he's just witnessed uh, subjects being saved from what would have been certain death. And so you get the king getting down on his knees one minute and then the next minute, arrogance is coming into play again. What this tells me is that Satan's influence was all around so as soon as the opportunity came, the arrogance used to come inside the minds of Nebuchadnezzar and all the other kings that came after, because Satan was hell-bent on stopping God's people, God's people at the time, not allowing people to serve the Most High, even though they wanted to. And the same will be true now. There will be... Satan and his hordes, that'll be stopping whatever Christian group is around today that want to follow in the footsteps of previous Christians who only wanted to serve God. And Satan is going all out and using all these earthly hordes and using whatever underhand tactics he's got to stop those people from worshipping the true God. <laughs> 